Hey, what are you doing? What I've just done is I've retested to 12900K, 13900K, 14900K, and the Intel Core Ultra 285K. So I've got four generations of i9 CPUs from Intel. Do you know how much performance you're actually gonna gain between them two? Just give a guess right now. I can tell you we're wrong because I was wrong. I was like, seriously? Is it even worth upgrading or is it worth upgrading? Here's the thing, you're gonna have to watch the rest of the video and then you'll find out. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com. And if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. Now if you're new on the channel, you might notice that I'm doing the test bench setup and testing them slightly differently. I am testing the CPUs with their own stock memory controller settings or, you know, the JDEC memory specs, which basically means what Intel is showing us on the spec sheet. For 12th gen, we have 4,800 megatransfers per second. 13th and 14th gen are running at 5,600 megatransfers per second. And the Core Ultra 9 is running at 6,400 megatransfers per second. Now, I've got separate test bench setups for both of these two. The three generations of Intel is running the ASRock Z790 Nova Wi-Fi. Both of these platforms are using the same ASUS RTX 4090 Matrix, 360 millimeter cooler, and the operating system and the project drive are separated, and I'm using the Samsung 980 Pro for the project drives. And most importantly, I'm using the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut for the thermal paste because I don't want my contact with the cooler be, you know, inadequate. So if you want to check them out, check them out in the video description below. Now then, I stopped on the memory controller already and you know how I am actually testing them, but that way I am actually showcasing how the memory controller also improves with the RAM. In theory, you could get a 6400 mega transfer kit running on the 12900K, but it might not work also. Which means that if you can get the same RAM speed on all of them, the difference probably is going to be even smaller. And if you want to see my video of how much RAM speed actually makes a difference in performance, then check out my video where we tested 8,000 megahertz versus 4,800 speed. And also I'm going a little bit more in depth in the IMC specs and speeds and why you get lower speeds when you've got four DIMMs installed on the Core Ultra 9 285K review. So go check that one out if you want to know that. In terms of power consumption, we have actually very similar power consumption. The 12900K is actually pulling 241 watts, which is a little bit lower than the 13900K and 14900K and 285K. And I'm using the new Intel stock settings or Intel Extreme Performance Profile, which means it's the highest recommended profile from Intel. I'm not letting it run mental like anymore. It is actually pulling down the power now after X amount of seconds. So it's not always running 256 watts unlimited for unlimited time. Now, looking at Cinebench R24, here we can see that the 13900K is about 13% faster in the single core score and about 20.5% faster in the multi core score. Quite a nice, sweet upgrade between them two generations. Yet, the 4900K is only about 5 to 6% faster compared to the 13900K, as you can see, and we're capping roughly about 19 to 26% faster compared to the 12900K. The two 85k which is now four generations on is only 27.6 percent faster in the single core score and about 65 percent faster in the multi-core score now why this makes me mad is if you look at apple's release of you know different products from m3 to m4 for example m2 to m3 wasn't that you know big of a difference but m3 to m4 these stats look absolutely amazing and what we're getting between four generations they're getting between one generation which is insane let's keep looking in geekbench 6 very similarly about 12 to 22 percent faster in the single and multi core scores the 13900k 4900k about extra three to two percent compared to 
100k so not that big of a difference and the 285k ultra 9 is only 18.6 percent faster in the single core score and 32.5 percent faster in the multi-core score so is that worth the money of upgrade from 12th gen to ultra 9 i don't know you let me know in the comment section below interestingly the igpu performance on the ultra 9 is one of the biggest things that has changed so as you can see compared to 12900k to the 285k the difference is insane. We are more than double the performance, 154% faster in the OpenCL and 140% faster in the Vulcan scores. So that is a huge improvement. Looking from 12900K to 13900K and 14900K is only about 6 to 7% improvement, which could be the RAM speed because we have 800 megahertz higher dim speed, which also is the VRAM for the iGPU, if that makes sense. In Photoshop, 3900K is around 11% faster in the overall scores, 4900K extra 2% faster, and the 285K only 6.5% faster than the 12900K. Yes, that is correct. The Ultra 9 is actually slower than the 13900K and improves only 6.5% compared to the 12900K. That is single digit improvement in four years. Is that what we're saying now? 12900K was launched in 2021, October or November. Let's keep going. Lightroom Classic, the 13900K is about 6% faster than the 12900K. 4900K is actually doubling from 13900K to 4900K, as you can see, about 13% faster now. And the 285K kind of slots somewhere between the 13900K and 14900K and being 10% faster in the overall score. Yes, the passive score is 23% faster because the E cores are a lot faster on the Core Ultra 9, but is that worth it? Let's keep looking. In Adobe Premiere Pro, 3900K is about 8% faster in the standard and extended overall scores. Some of these scores like Interframe Standard can go up to 15% faster. And the 4900K is a about 1 to 2% faster compared to the 13900K, about 10 to 11% compared to the 12900K. The 285K is roughly about 15 to 17% faster than the 12900K. And interestingly, in this software, we actually do see an improvement between all of these generations. Now, is 15 to 17% faster than the 12900K actually worth it? Well, that's up for you to decide. But depending on the codex you're using, Interframe, for example, you can get up to 25% increase in Premiere Pro on the Core Ultra 9 compared to the 12900K. In After Effects, 13900K is about 15% faster than the 12900K. 4900K, extra 3%. We're stretching it now to 18, 19% faster than the 12900K. And the 285K is 20% faster than the 12900K. Looks a little bit better, but compared to the 14900K, the 285K is roughly 1.2% faster. So it's not that impressive compared to the 14900K. Looking at the DaVinci Resolve, you can see that the 13900K is roughly about 7 to 9% faster in the overall scores. 14900K is about 7 to 9% faster in the overall scores. And the 285K is between 5 to 16% faster in the overall scores. Now, interestingly, if you look at the overall basic score, the 285K is 16% faster, but the standard extended overall scores are roughly about 6 to 7% faster. That shows to me that maybe the software isn't utilizing the new CPU as well. And it's a little bit odd that it's about 30% slower in the long GOP scores and that just shows me that maybe the dryer for the iGPU isn't exactly playing back it as well because the media engine should be a lot better on the 285K there. But the Intraframe standard score is 40% faster roughly on the Core Ultra 9 compared to the 12900K, which is a very nice improvement. So looks like maybe having some more software tweaks and updates, the Core Ultra 9 could be quite a good upgrade for the Venture Resolve. Let's turn the page to 3D and looking at the performance increase here, the 13900K is about 30% faster than the 12900K in the Monster and Junk Shop scenes, which is quite insane, really. The Classroom scene is only 5% faster, not that big of a difference in there. 4900K is extra 5% faster in the Monster and Junk Shop scenes compared to 13900K, and about 30 to 35 
4% faster than the 12900K. The 285K here takes it to another level. It's more than 56% faster in the monster scene, 75% faster in the junk shop scene, and 55% faster in the classroom scene. The 3D rendering on the Core Ultra 9 is absolutely insane performance. So if that is what you're doing, look at that performance increase. It really makes a difference. In V-Ray, 3900K is 26% faster. 4900K is about 31% faster. And the 285K is 70% faster than the 12900K. That is getting close to double the performance. That's absolutely insane performance increase. So what about the conclusion then? Is it worth upgrading from 12900K to the Core Ultra? And right now, depends what you're doing. If you're doing 3D, the upgrade looks quite healthy and you know perhaps worth it if you're doing video editing i'm kind of doubting it because it's not much better than the 4900k 3900k and now with the bios update there shouldn't be any issues with them degrading anymore either but the bottom line is for video editing the Core ultra 9 doesn't look that appealing yet at least to me i mean tell me if i'm wrong in the comment section below and then finally we've got the photo editing and in there, having 6.5 to 10% increase on 12900K to here, honestly, to me, that's not worth it. Now, before coming onto these benchmarks, you know, I'm testing these and I'm thinking, surely there's like 30 plus, 40 plus percent increase between these two, you know, generations, four generations apart. But I was actually wrong. And I was very, very surprised seeing this, that actually the best bang for buck is still going with the LGA 1700 platform. It is absolutely insane. And the Core Ultra 9 yet doesn't offer us anything that much better that we're not already getting with the 4900K especially if you look at the price point that is a lot better price point so if you want to build yourself the best bank for ball create a pc this build guides in the video description below where i'm recommending some of these things and these are smart links that always lead you to the latest video that's uploaded or relevant to you and in there the pricing is even better because the pricing has come down so if you want to save yourself some money and build the best performance pc for your money go check them out thanks guys for watching and i'll meet you in the comment section below bye bye